So, um, we've been reading this book about how emotions are being symmetric. I'll do a whole copy of the And today, the topic of the class finally is going to be emotions. The topic of the next class will also be emotions. It's really important that we get this part of the season. There are efficient solvency in today, and what's necessary in order to see more efficient general So, motion to be seen. There are two papers that are in some of the things that have been mentioned now. I have a couple of people that said this. This one's going to make its way around. This is a good word. It's not that it's in some of the stuff. That is your sign up sheet where you have a demo for the first time. In the two days I'm out here, our top this is the day we have to go. And the other day here is the third day, which is the same. We have to go to the right side. In 30 minutes, lots of days, we have to go to the five. It's going to be in the SP20. You don't sign up today, that's fine. Still sign up. Obviously, if you already know the rules, it's going to be possible. So, Mark and Lucy, the second reason I need actually some of the topics. For today, as well as for next class. That's the key that is an individual operator and also more things about it. One of the key things that I think is that you have to turn in the workshop and you may recall from the previous class that they sort of know about the topics of computer science. So he said the distinction between thinking and emotion is wasted in a century of psychologists at the time. Because they don't understand that each emotion is a particular way of thinking. I'm going to be applying to the person. Uh, kind of what he's saying is that if you spend your time thinking that emotion is somehow something else, uh, your thoughts are separate and distinct from you. You're going to struggle because you're going to be thinking about, well, you know, I agree with my logical thought and emotions are Or how I make a logical decision when I'm having to deal with these emotions. So his opinion is that a lot of scientists, particularly in psychology, are philosophy. Built a lot of their models of scientific experiments trying to understand emotion uh, of artificially separating them. We believe that they are in fact moving together. That emotion is just another way of thinking. Um, he passed away fairly recently. In 2016. Moment number seven. Uh, some more announcements. Some of you actually have already done it. It's great. The slides are good. There's no slides for that class because we didn't get a lot of them. But the videos are good. We have one question where someone uh, couldn't find uh, an example of them here. 
So I put that link up on the so you can get the top right so you can get the example. Those are the online links for the rest of the uh, C course classes um, that we're going to use. Right now, I don't think I'm going to physically be here on the 22nd. Um, if that's the thing that to be the case, we say they have the class as always, make sure there's somebody who can get to the classroom. I will tell you something happens. The management of the institution is the only institution that does that. It's fine. We have had some folks running into some issues that were running things last minute. I think now we've already done some of the things in the exams. So, I'm not really going to change the whole thing. So, I'm going to get it up here. So, 12 is still to do. I don't need to last in it. I'm going to get the response. Okay. Um, I'm going to get it up We have one of the uh, one of the projects in the class being done is it? We're basically going to help you use different faces that really come about from the old faces. If you want to take a picture of and then use an AI algorithm to combine them to see if you can create a face that's a unique face that doesn't in and of itself look like. One person, but at the same time, they look like everybody that someone uh, to see what that looks like. So they requested the volunteer participation basically to be able to create a perspective in artificial reference class. Person, very successful. I'm not going to use that image, at least in the class, uh, when I get the class in the next year. Uh, and that was a fair request, obviously. We're going to use your uh, photo that's going to come to you. We ask you if you want to stay out of the classroom. Or if not, you can send me an email. I would uh, throw the optional. I would, however, uh, make one request, uh, which is if you don't want to do it or aren't going to do it, let them know so that they're not waiting around to see if they can get enough. We have a bunch of emails saying that we might do a public job, but you know that they got made of just the things. This is the required reading from pretty much the rest of the class. It won't be an argument. It won't get shot in the floor. I thought about doing a team of pieces, but I thought, well, at, at this point, I've done a lot of other classes, I've done a lot of things going on, I've done a lot of things going on, I've done a lot of things going on, and you know, find yourself in some kind of a little bit of reading now and go back and touch on it. So it's basically, uh, this one you should be uh, now, basically, this week, to get the most out of the next class, next classes. It's called Brains, Minds, and Life. Um, part of this is thought of everyone else. It's basically an argument that we're talking about that. And some of you are here to do a bunch of times. So one of the things that you're going to see uh, here is that Martin Minsky is fairly controversial person. He asked me for his opinion. He gave me his opinion. He thought it was a person who didn't have so whether you agree with them or not, uh, it's fine, but you can see when you read it. Um, but when it's asked a question, you can answer it. It's, uh, it's all you should be. Um, so that's the lead to the article. I did not put up a little bit of extra question. Uh, and then as far as the book, we're not going to officially read all the chapters in the book. Or if there are going to be any questions that 
So emotions today, uh, we're going to show you a, a, a bit about how to touch on emotions, how they fit into what the models we've made for perception, and then we'll jump into emotions in artificial systems, intelligence systems. Today we'll just get most of the way through just that first point. Again, Marvin, this is going to be the first part of the uh, he's an American cognitive scientist, uh, well recognized as an artificial intelligence scientist. He's found the MIT's AI lab, which is called something. He's one of the best in the cabinet. Uh, 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 he created something called SNARK. I don't know if you remember what it stands for, but I remember what it is, which is it's a general law artificial intelligence model. So we are creating our own networks and our computers that are doing all artificial intelligence on our networks. Um, he created uh, back in the 1950s as the original artificial intelligence. He talked previously in class about the general law system. Long uh, airplane driving system and that's an airline driving system. He wrote a book called The Motion Machine. I had at one point thought about having it in this class, but it's a little bit less of a And if you are interested in working in artificial intelligence, I recommend it as a book that you should follow. You know, there's some of those It's pretty fascinating. He was an atheist. Also, wrote another book in the 70s that was very, was very uh, referred to in red and was quite efficient. It's called Society. The idea there basically is that intelligence is defined with the interaction of a bunch of non intelligent parts. If you read that maybe a month ago, you might say, well, how can you take a bunch of stuff that's in the intelligent? But since we've gone through our language class fairly recently, 
remember that quarters of these offsets that are both completely from letters that are really false. So it's at least not out of the world, it's a realm of possibility of making blocks and intelligence themselves, they have no so we believe that humans were machines, uh, and that intelligence came from autonomous or semi-autonomous agents. We thought there was something on the order of four hundred of them, basically sort of mini computers in the brain that had a fair amount of autonomy in the very beginning, and that the large important without. From any of the other uh, but that they created an act in each other. One example is that the world is going to have almost 400 million supercomputers that might be responsible for making sure that they don't fall down. Another one might be responsible for making sure that another one may be responsible for making sure that we are translating Congress now. So his idea was consciousness what we're actually aware of screen limited, but the thing that we were subconscious as a bunch of some of the institutions if you will, and it's taking care of all these tasks because you figure it out at some point in your mind and sort of delegate it and consciousness to yourself. Here are some myths. If you don't think any of these are myths, you need to think for yourself. And the reason we go back to some of these myths about the class, for example, a lot of decision making is separate and distinct. Emotion. This is the concept recently that says that no kind of brain that's actually logical is some evil emotional force or some but there are outside emotions, so it's there's something to do. But when we make decisions and we think, um, we are processing information that's inclusive of maybe that your emotional condition. And they give a point in time, uh, maybe relatively calm, and that's not what's going on. Or you may be that decision that you make is in particular ways, uh, taxing in terms of its consequences. And so it may feel like the emotion is going on. And I think it appears recently that um, emotions are always there and they're present at some point when you get stronger and more dominant in the world. Logical thinking is separate from the state of the emotion. What does it say? What it says is the opposite of what it says. Logical thinking is separate from the state of the emotion. Thinking is separate from the state of the emotion. This first three things do sound exactly the same as the emotion. Emotions are inherently good or bad. We do a lot of uh, research on emotion and um, this is something that we sort of body. Um, and just at some point when you're dealing with something you saw it from the last time, you realize what they can say. You have to use the words. At some point you realize that you can do it in a useful way and you can take these notes and other people. So, I had to go through what we call an artist's tap in order to draw some ideas and turn it into words. And so when we read about emotion, we have seen similar things. Uh, when we talk about emotion, we have using some words in order to classify them. And sometimes good and bad is used to classify them. So when we say that they're not inherently good or bad, we mean by that is that we can be angry. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It may not feel good to you, but the fact that great is that you don't necessarily compare it to a bad thing. You have to look at it from the bigger pictures of it. 
What am I doing about? And then we have to look at the second part of the issue, which is um, what decisions do I make while being uh, in part of my thing? To the extent um, that um, so depending upon the character of what cause I make, and what you did with that in your thinking, um, maybe that can determine the details of your life. But the character thing, uh, say, from your life, if you have a conception of the We express our emotions as simply from our thoughts. So to the extent that we agree that emotions are just one way. And expression of emotion is just really another way of communicating. So thinking and looking at emotions are the same, just another way of thinking. But whatever you see on my face is just nonverbal. And it's an extent it's driven by a lot of emotion, maybe you can infer from what you see on my face. Not happy with it. It's not that I have some emotion that's coming out of my body and manifesting itself in my vision. I can happy and choose um, purposely uh, to present my face in certain different ways. I can do that in the evening, may or may not be consistent with um, but I'm yeah, it may be consistent with what I'm doing, but it's not necessarily the correct expression. So we start thinking about facial expressions, gestures, posture, as nothing more than communication. It takes communicating to you um, thoughts that have a high logical content associated but in all cases, it's What's consistent with what we right now that we have not for all in terms of emotions that we see? Put it this way, it kind of makes sense that we see it's just another way. We can feel the emotions of others. But if you think of communication, or the suggestions of feeling, touch, or sound as communication, what you can do is interpret what someone else is communicating to you. And to the extent that that person is someone who you know a lot about. That you care a lot about. That you have feelings for. I don't necessarily need um, love feelings for people. I'm someone that you've done a friend or someone that you have a person you've seen and you've given your life. To the extent that you have something like that, then you may have actually a feeling that you feel. Um, that is not inconsistent with the feeling that that person is feeling. But today, scientists don't know how another person actually feels. The same way that I, I don't know what they think. You can tell me what they think. I can hear the words, I can interpret those words, and to the extent that I'm watching TV, I can have some idea. But I still don't listen So it's not that emotion that's in that in some strange category. This is the fact that it gives us the same version of us that's going on in the world. This one I love, right? So it's not a good I thought of um, about the man. Usually someone said, I think it's a better than man. That's usually a whole class. 
And that would create see the reason why. So humans uniquely feel emotion because we are made to fundamentally experience and then we've already um, seen uh, in the class that we referred to in the old place of the genetic influence on our own. Pretty much the same single digit or seven digit difference. When the genetic makeup of one human to another is different, it's the same monster difference. It's also different, that's why we look When uh, psychologists study emotion, they normally do one of two things. The question psychologists do have a neuroscientist would see. They either conduct experiments on humans, or we'll see some examples of that in the next class of children. Or they conduct experiments on animals. And that's the item. The strategy we'll see. People say, well, animals don't have them. But a lot of the research here in the United States is based on looking at animals and looking at the people that are old, not in some sports or some condition, or if they're measuring conditions where we can deal with certain behaviors and try to understand what that might mean about the behaviors. They don't have emotions. And that seems like a pretty silly, pretty silly thing to do with uh, subjecting animals to these experiments. On the other hand, if you don't think that animals have emotions, maybe um, you think of the prey or also maybe you think you can't prey or they don't have emotions. Or you think that um, that prey uh, is similar to I'm not here to tell you that animals do this cause of emotion because other than the human animal, right, of which I am one, a lot of people would say, I have a picture of you too. You know, last night I had a dog visit my house. And while I was sitting out with my friends on the patio, beautiful animal, and the, and the interactions I've had with that dog in the course of 45 minutes, so, um, I've been very emotionally engaged. I don't know what that animal is thinking in the context of sleeping. I don't know what the animal is feeling. I can't put to you that this feeling is something but Didn't say any words to me. Didn't say, hey, I'm sleepy. Uh, nice and you're welcome. You're calm. Um, it also didn't just uh, barge in and start to talk. It was uh, uh, about a 30 minute follow up with us. And of course, I had a couple of times. And so we had a couple of meetings. They were respectful. Uh, please don't hurt me. I stood there long enough, um, but I decided that I didn't feel the same. I put some uh, bullets and put out a plate, and put in the freezer, and get a little ice and put it in there and stuff. Uh, and then the dog is really hot. Maybe because I guess they don't have that very often. I thought, uh, well, maybe that dog would just fly to the freezer and the hot cold and stuff. So I did that, put it out. And the dog, the heat comes to it, and a lot of toys dying in the dog in the air. It didn't completely end up. And I put the trick down and took my friends and kept the interaction going. Eventually, the dog came back. I realized that I was just, that was definitely all in the dog. But that dog, but now I know who's the dog. So I don't want to spend the whole class doing theory and that's a good thought and it's literally just 45 minutes after that, um, the dog will be on part of our room and not be able to get out for us and we can go out and do some good things that they want to do. But 
So I can't prove to you that God is having me. Um, I can prove that it's in my case that they uh, influence me, at least they influence my life. Um, and I can have a idea, uh, a reasonable I think, assumption that at least that God felt something. What a problem. I don't know that. Uh, but the behavior of the dog uh, was a behavior that to me uh, isn't some sort of uh, real rudimentary uh, behavior. Uh, that behavior to me really showed a uh, higher level of cognition um, So I believe the whole dog did feel that. I believe the dog was hurt. I believe the dog was hurt. Because it continued to be secondary elements of the great reality of God. So when you hear someone say that, you say it, you mentioned because they can't prove to you that it means saying that you can prove that someone else has to be We're not going to answer these questions today. These are the questions that we want to answer to build an artificial intelligence system uh, that has uh, general intelligence. So thank you. So how do the physical system and the bodies and brains produce feelings and thoughts? What are the relevant components of the physical system? We've talked about a lot in the past. How do non-intelligent humans collaborate to realize intelligence? And I always like to keep this in the back of my mind. Are we really intelligent? What does that actually mean? A question that I actually mean. Not questioning your intelligence, question of all. All right. So how does your how do you develop emotional intelligence? The reason for the slides here. Your brain is comprised of other neurons. There are also other cells, other than Leah. There's at least neurons in there. Your brain develops while it's inside your head for the most part. Those are things that come out and spin around and move around. Uh, that means it has reality that it can control that well, uh, but that it can put some sort of representation of the senses, use this interpretation of those senses, the concepts, uh, these are the concepts that it's learned over the reality. Uh, it interacts with other brains and other heads. And that's part of the experience of intelligence. These interactions contribute to those points of who you are and what you care about. Here, you may feel concerned and interest and importance about today and the future. And what you care about and what you think others should care about and care about is strongly connected to what you experience emotionally about. In the next class, we're going to be trying to use these understandings to figure out how we do it. For example, sharing is a review. How can we make computer learning software to care about them? Why are emotions important? So two concepts we write about uh, a Lisa emotion signal the brain to the bullet tissue is something you care about. Body emotion is the effect of your health. 
And so generally people tend to care about the body. And then affect the niche is another way of saying the things that um, care about. Outside the body of the disability. One emotions form part of compensation to my needs. Use the word compensation for my kids. And so you start writing and thinking and thinking at the same time. Emotions form part of compensation to my needs as it creates the world around it and what it should do within it. You should say yes, yet emotions do not explicitly provide information regarding problems. Whether they see the thoughts of the back of realism, I'm not sure why they're doing something. Um, but, but despite the uncertainty, you can find something. Whether they're or not, thoughts that you should be talking about emotional thoughts, which are all your thoughts, may not be completely accessible to your thoughts. This isn't just something special about emotions. It's not all your senses, you have your senior representatives at all. You can make a sense of what you just want to make a problem. And then it's covered there at the bottom. Whether or not it's an eight concept used in front of your thoughts, which you can make a sense of what May not all be changeable. That can be a little scary for some of us to think about. But these, if there are 400 million uh, super brains within your head taking care of all these tasks, um, and they can develop over the course of your lifetime, and you don't really have access uh, to them, if you will, and maybe, maybe you can't change necessarily uh, all of its. Okay. That was a lot of bullet points inside. The good part is you have it there and you're spending a period of time on the bullet points inside. You don't get it at the top of the mirror section. So you want to get it exactly what you have to do. So this is uh, adapted from Martin Mason's uh, book um, on emotions. A lot of this book on emotions uh, is actually available free on. So again, this example of a child playing in the And so the next couple of slides I'm going to show you is a different example. It's important to get anything you need to pull out of the next like, 20 minutes of this time. Let's see what we're doing this Yeah. What that means is if you don't pay attention to this slide, and then you get that for the five minutes and go to the time. But I just want to kind of give you a point of view. This child is playing in mud. The child is playing in mud has Fork, spoon, and a cup. And the child has decided to make make believe food by using the use of tools and the cup. We're going to do it the way we've seen a parent do it. We're going to assume that the child is playing well. Again, I want you to imagine. Um, Following three things that are going to happen. Those being sets of occurrences. Here's set of occurrences number one. And these occurrences are the, the same occurrences we talked about uh, a while back in the past. So we're playing one. Talking to the battery. Tom wants to go cut the left. First time to get to the fork. He fails. 
So I feel frustrated, disappointed, and when success is the key, that is a tool. The child feels satisfied and experiences the third set of all. Experience and lessons. A fourth is not carrying my life. So the child learned the fourth was not carry. But it's a very good thing as a child who just give up on the project of the child, had a spoon, used the spoon, and realized that the spoon was respirating. But to the extent that it's good, and it's a good thing, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, that's the goal of the child is to make a new thing. But this one only makes it good. So get some light out of the screen. We learned this by trial and error. There's no other person here. It's kind of a pain thing. Um, they were working with fluids, students, like a fork or an instrument that doesn't have slots or bones in it. They just the pain they have to do it. So self taught. A trial and error, and it was emotionally reinforced. How was it emotionally reinforced? But if we read the words there, um, the child felt frustrated and disappointed. But then when it uh, learned a trial and error, the school work, the child felt satisfied and complete. There's a current set number two. Unexpectedly, while this child is sitting here, feeling pleased and satisfied after discovering about the school, they're coming to the point of the point. Stranger about it. And he says, that's the gross thing to do. Child feels anxious, alarmed, and afraid. <laughs> Overcome by fear and urge to escape, the child puts the present goal on hold and runs to find the fear. It's an experience and lesson. Did the child learn that finding the land is gross? So, uh, so basically, it's a paraphrase of what you said, but um, stranger change the perspective of this situation. Child, um, someone immediately stop to focus on the one that was made to be fake. And the emotions are presumably a driving them to safety and protection. So, here are experience and lessons. Uh, playing with my gross mate, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. There's an emotion that continues to focus. That's what we infer from the view. Maybe the child learns that, that this place is true. Associates make association with that that place. Maybe the child learns to be about objectives instead of the child going out on the road and trying to make for the first time. Make a little bit of cake. Maybe the next time you think about it, before centering that on their own. Or if we're being forced here, we just wait for her to have the pieces of the time we're going to continue. 
So the last few years, we kind of missed the things that were closer or not. We might have um, might have a breakthrough tree with a breakthrough. We may hold the end. Self-talk. Stranger. Sounds like the lesson of the stranger is kind of deep. So I think that. So whatever unless that was the lesson when the child heard that age of about dreams or pressures uh some problem solving. Well we don't know uh, what the prior experiences were that contributed to uh, those emotions. That are emotional concepts that describe feel, feel anxious, alarmed, and worried. Okay, number three. Burnt set from the food. Parents reproach. So the child returns to parents' confession. But instead of assurance, the parent rebukes. What a disgraceful, nasty dream. See what you've done to your clothes and things that cannot save you. The child is shamed against the child. Experience the lessons, read lesson from. Later, right? Next slide. At least the feelings here uh, seem somewhat related to the fact that uh, the child's really in love. Maybe again, less likely to bring the child along. One of the lessons learned is the shame instead of proud, the parent said, Wow, you're a mess. What are you doing? And maybe the child would be feeling a little bit proud of the child's work and balance the information from the parent as well. And next time I'm going to build so that I can come see you. I'd love to see you. Thank you, sir. So that's the third one saying, I'm going to come with you. Parents make these choices. So the discussion that I'm going to ask some questions about. So playing in the mind emotional concepts of thought. So you can see the phrase emotional states and suggest that you want to make some speak. Engineering is a very steady state, meaning that there might be a continuity between different states and places as well. That you're in the state that you're in the place, and it might be continuing to be on the drive from my rest of my life. And you run along that drive. If you're at a given place, you want to go to a different state. I'd like to use that and use concepts or the concepts of construction. We say, say you're an you emotional process of thought. And see, these are some of the words that we have for the concepts that we believe are involved in the child. We believe that the child is just these three slides, so just these three simple experiences. Experience emotional concepts. That are approximately to excitement, frustration, satisfaction, please, accomplish, confidence, surprise, anxious, alarm, fear, disgrace, ugliness, shame, uncertainty, and all the problems. Go back and look, there's very few words about 
Kurt says that that needs to be a child. A lot of emotional concepts that were, were involved for that child. And at least in two of the current sets, maybe third, you don't know what the parent, the rest of the reaction is. But at least in two of those, it is self taught. I mean, whatever they, that child is going to be with their lifetimes, when they experience that first current set and process, they will be processed by themselves. So who are the participants, the child? And the child is using this access uh, to the child's senses, perceptions, memories, and thoughts. Stranger, creating the occurrences directly in the front, reflects the child reality. And the parent of creating the occurrences directly in the child that reflects the child's. Reality. So directly as a channel comes from the size you have a lot of that. You said there were six types of occurrence in it. Three of them could influence uh, things that we could perceive here immediately about you and inside you. And those concepts are going to be a good part of the show. So we shall be last time we heard about it. Thank you. So now some questions. Now I'm going to use the chat. About how old is the child? So Early that age? Three, four, or five. So somewhere between three and seven. The child a boy or a girl? Huh? It's not a so parents might not allow to go to the So what about the stranger? Uh, how old is the stranger? Get more answers when you heard when you were hearing the story about the stranger. Maybe you have some sort of mental picture hearing the place to the story. But when you leave that mental picture, you have that probably said to you. How would you go to that? That is Stranger, like coke, uh, into a place. Yeah. 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 
It's an older guy. No base for that. Anybody have a, a screen here in your head? How old was your one? It's actually fascinating. Here are these three things. Here are fascinating. One, if you're all paying attention to yourself, you're trying to be presumably what you're learning in this class. You're trying to make sense of things. You're trying to remember the story. So, you're trying to make sense of things in the story. These pictures aren't random pictures. In your case, maybe we could say that that means that someone would be really pretty threatened. Maybe once hard to find. In this case, we've heard two really different. This is really one of the problems. And one of them, it's not like both of them actually had a couple of problems already, not playing the button. The other one was someone that was stressed. Uh, Did anybody have a vision of a stranger being uh, 70? 70. 70. 70. Uh, would it be okay? Would, would, let's say the kid playing with the mic was 40 years old. And the 70 or 15. Would that cause it? Uh, 
So the point of this is your experience is fan in the third sense, forming your concepts. Concepts of that day. If there are concepts you're going to get to access them, they can supercomputable in some way. That's it. And then it forms your prediction. You have all the information before the world. It has all the information. There are lots of time. You have to go in based on what you expect from something you want. That's going to be very valuable. These prediction defaults are also going to be a very curious and a short cut to five. That's a short cut to we didn't do these things, we didn't get anything done. Because, but because we do these things, we also have to be careful to make sure that what is important to have the assumptions that we're making, the concepts that we're using, the conditions that we're making, it's not important. Mark and Google are influencing the decision process. This could happen to my husband and wife. Uh, partners and have uh, conflict, they don't realize it's something that you really are smart with. It's causing you to react in this situation. It's tricky. Okay, so we're This is the story I just to show you. I didn't make anything up. That's why um, fiction books work. Because you can write this, and you in your own mind, bring up the words, there's enough concepts there. I think you're going to make it cool by creating your own version of the reality. That's why people read books, and there's a movie. And so that person doesn't look like anything like the person. It doesn't look like the person that you do. That definitely can happen. <laughs> yeah. There's the tall, heavy films on the short front of All right. So let's see how much time we have. Just three minutes. So I'm going to go through this really quick. I'll pick up here uh, when we start again. So uh, on Saturday, so I, I think I took up some friends with me from Germany. It's been a great experience in doing that. Very efficient. 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 And you know, I've been with her on YouTube and put a chance in a conversation which is pretty good. I'm speaking to her language and recognizing her. And then she put me to the bottom of the book bar to see her and her other language. And then she put me to the bottom of the book bar. And for the most part, it's still a lot of this language. And then she put me to the bottom of the book bar. So on Saturday, she said, um, well, she was concerned because if you're looking at this, it's what you said, and if I read it, and here I was explaining to her, and if I read it, and if we don't need it in their favor, then it's very interesting. It's very refreshing. So, but I'll change your mind and make her expressed. That's the difference for what they call the theory. French and she said, it's possible we love that religion. I'm wearing sun. Except on Sunday morning, I wake up. So what I'm going to do now, I'll set the story now and we'll pick up here next time. 
So on Sunday morning, I wake up early. I just had my actually about some horrible things that someone did to me in the So I hope that this person will be my dream. But I woke up, realized I was dreaming, and thought, what do I want to do? I want to work with the top slide. It's not a good reason anywhere else to do what I want to do. So that was my plan. So I was getting a little bit, and I was just about, she has a different plan than she had a plan. I love talking to my wife, but I wanted to get the class to be done. So um, we talked on the Saturday, I went downstairs for breakfast, and then from yesterday, I was able to get to the computer in my house for my freshman year. So I said, oh, I want to be on the radio class. And I asked the question that I wanted to get to. He said, oh, it's okay. But I said, oh, the first day you asked me, and I said, oh, I'm going to go to the So I got to go to the first day. And then I heard the story. And the very next slide got to the first place. There's just one more slide here for today. So she joined me in the kitchen and asked me if I used four eggs in my kitchen. I thought it's kind of a question, but I do have a batter for what the egg whites are in the hospital. So maybe she had seen the egg whites that were contained in the food. I told her I don't actually use whole eggs because I try to put down my cholesterol and most of the calories are in the egg kill. But it's these egg whites. She asked if I would use the photos of her. So my question, and I make the photo. Then she asked me if I thought it would be okay if we put some sugar into the milk. So I said, as a matter of fact, two eggs that sit there for a little while, but I can put it through. So my plan was to make the space for all of us and then start working on it. So now I'm making the first place for the videos that I like because of my diet. And then I'm going to have to make the diet for the six weeks of health. So I said, okay, hey, sugar, sugar. Uh, she likes that some milk in her first place. I thought that the milk in my I didn't even remember it. <laughs> Um, I put some butter in the pan, and she says, Can you put some sugar in the pan? That's So, long story short, um, I talked to my wife and said, You want me to make that some fish with the glass? What would I have done? I'm sure. Spread or like that. Uh, or, you want to make that? She could tell I was doing the question. <laughs> and then our doing friend was like, just as we're about to act, I hear a voice that we do. Thank you for the first post. They're really great. <laughs> and so I think the that. So I told them, actually, it's your recipe. And um, so they are really good, but it's not my name. So how did I feel? We'll go through that next time. Um, and then what were the steps that have to happen? So what I want to do next time is kind of go through the next five years, style and letter. Um, and really think through what was going on here and what the options were to have. You know, exactly. 